Today I'm going to show you how to make this crystal bead necklace with a dangle. We are going to learn a method of using two needle right angle weave to start the weave and then we will separate our threads and do one needle right angle weave on up on either side. The reason I'm showing you this is because of the technique itself. It's nice to be able to center a piece and then work, have your thread to work both sides without having to just do one side and then add thread and do the other side. You can balance it out this way. And it also, the way that I've done this, gives you a way to have a vertical dangle with the beads coming straight down instead of coming out with seed beads and attaching a, a, in a loop. So it's just a little bit different way to position your focal bead when you do it this way. And it's, it has more of a classic look to it, more of a fine jewelry look when you do that. So it's the technique that I was after. This is a very typical stitch. It's a right angle weave, which is what we're concentrating on now so that um, you can learn all the different ways of doing right angle weave. But it's, it's a technique that I wanted you to learn more than anything else. Crystal bead necklace has been done a million times. This is just my spin on it. And like I said, it's just a very basic stitch. So let's go ahead and get started and let's look at our material list first. Okay, for this project, you will need a toggle clasp. This one is a little heart-shaped hematite tone toggle clasp, and that's what I am using to finish my necklace with today. So any toggle clasp will work just fine. Then you will need six millimeter bicone crystals. This is a Swarovski bicone, and it is clear. You will need four millimeter bicone crystals. This is also a Swarovski, and it is also clear. 15 O and 11 O seed beads. You will need many more 11 O's than you need 15 O's. I will tell you exact amounts in caption. These are both Toho. They are nickel plated silver tone. Then you will need a drop crystal. This drop crystal is also a Swarovski clear. It is 22 millimeters long, 10 millimeters wide at the widest point. It is top drilled, so that means the hole is in the top of the crystal, not down the center vertically. You can use any size drop crystal you would like to use, just make sure it's top drilled. You will need two beading needles. I'm using size 10 English beading needles today. Of course, you will need thread. I am using nanofill. This is 8 pound nanofill. You can also use 10 pound nanofill or you can use eight or six pound fire line. That'll work just fine. Let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay, to start this project, you are going to measure a wingspan of your thread. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your arms straight out side by side like you're going to fly away. You're going to measure from fingertip the entire length of one arm across your chest the entire length of the other arm to your fingertips, and that is a wingspan of thread. If you do not want to extend your fire line on either side of your necklace, then you can go ahead and use two wingspans. So just pull that length twice. Um, using that much thread is very difficult, especially for a beginning beater, because it likes to tangle and turn into the slip knots and do all kinds of things. Plus, when you pull that much thread through your beads as you're using that much, it weakens your thread. So I recommend one wingspan and I will show you how to extend your fire line or your nano fill when you need to put more on during the course of this necklace. So go ahead and measure out your wingspan and then you're going to take one end of that wingspan and put it through one needle, then take the other end and put it through the other needle. Put the two needles together and make sure 
that the amount of thread that you drew through the other side of your needles is the same length. So if you pulled through five or six inches, make sure you have five or six inches on both needles. So that way your project stays, stays centered and you have the same amount of thread to work either side of your necklace with. Once you have done that, then you will pick up your large crystal. We're going to use a combination of right angle weave. We're going to do two thread right angle weave to start with, and then we're going to move into one needle right angle weave. This is a good technique to use simply because when you build one side of your necklace, you don't have to go back, tie on thread, and build the other side. Your thread is ready and waiting for you. That's why I'm teaching you this method. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our big crystal through one of our needles. I'm using my right needle. Then I'm going to put both of my needles together. And I'm going to bring this crystal down to the center of my thread, like so. Just to make sure that my crystal is right in the middle of my project. I'm going to separate my needles and make sure that my right thread is on the right side and my left thread is on the left side. This way I don't have any tangles or any um, bumps in my thread. So I want to make sure that my needles are coming out on either side. Now I'm going to pick up with my right needle, I'm going to pick up an 11-0 seed bead and then I'm going to pick up three 15-0 seed beads and then I'm going to pick up a bicone crystal and then three 15 seed beads on my right needle. And let's zoom in so you can see what I've got. So I have an 11 0, three 15 0s, a bicone four millimeter, and three 15 0 seed beads. Then I'm going to drop this down to my crystal without moving my thread. I want to keep everything centered. Drop that down. Then I'm going to park that needle and I'm going to pick up my left needle. You can put it in your right hand, just make sure it's your left needle. Move your right needle out of your way and do the same thing. Pick up an 11 0, three 15 0s, a bicone crystal, and three 15 0 seed beads onto your needle. One, two, three. Drop those down to the crystal. Now pick up both of your needles, put them together, and recenter your piece. Make sure all of it is down to the center of your thread, like so. Then put your two needles together, pick up a six millimeter bicone crystal, and slide both the needles through the bicone crystal and bring it down to the work already on your thread. Then separate your needles again, make sure your threads are not crossed, your right needle right thread is on the right side, your left needle left thread is on the left side, and then what you will do is you will pick up an 11 -0 seed bead on your right needle, a 6 millimeter bicone crystal, and an 11 -0 seed bead. Drop that down, park your right needle, pick up your left needle, pick up an 11 -0 seed bead, a bicone crystal, six millimeter, and an 11 0 seed bead, and drop that down. Now pick up both of your needles. On your right needle, pick up a six millimeter bicone crystal, slide it down to the thread, and then pick up your left needle and go through the crystal, like so. So you're crisscrossing your threads. And pull. This will bring this down into a little triangular shape. Let me get you closer so you can see what I have. This is what I have so far. Now at this point, I will start working with one thread this way and one thread this way. However, I need to reinforce this centerpiece or it's just going to be loose, wobbly, and the possibility of the crystals cutting through my thread is a very strong possibility. So I have my right needle here. I'm coming out of my crystal here. I am going to pick up my piece 
and I'm just going to start sewing through my centerpiece. So I'm coming out of this crystal on this side with my right needle. I'm going to go down into the 11-0 and the crystal under it and the crystal under that and I am going to pull my needle through. And then I am going to go through these 315-0 seed beads right here. Make sure you get all three of them. They, they'll want to argue with you but you can do it. Let's get all three of them and go down into the next crystal here and pull it through. So all we're doing basically is sewing through all the beads on this side of the crystal. Now I'm going to sew through the three 15 O's, the 11 O, and I'm going to push it through my crystal. Then I'm going to sew back up this side of all the beads with the same needle. So I'm just going to go up through all of these beads Pull through. Now I'm coming out of the little four millimeter bicone crystal on this side. I'm going to pick up my 315 O seed beads here. And then I'm going to go up through the six millimeter bicone, the 11 O behind it, and this the six millimeter bicone behind that. And then I'm going to go through the 11 O and the crystal on top. So now my needle is where I started. However, now this thread is shorter than this thread because I sewed through. And I want to keep it the same, plus I want to give my centerpiece one more layer of thread to have some more strength. So I'm going to park my right needle now over somewhere where it's not in my way. And I'm going to start sewing through just like I did with my right needle with my left needle. So I am coming out of the bicone crystal on this side with my left hand needle. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to start going down through all the beads on this side. Now you can do this of course with your right hand. So I'm going to switch hands. So I'm going to just go through all of the beads again. So I started on the left hand side of my pendant. I'm going to stay on the left hand side until I get through all of those beads. And turn it a little bit. I'm going to go through the 11 o and through the crystal. And if it loosens at this point, don't worry too much. We'll tighten it up when we get to the top. Try to keep it from being really loose and wobbly though because you don't want to have to pull your thread and um, bunch up your beads. So then I'm going to start traveling up all the beads on the right hand side of my pendant with the same needle of course. Now I'm going to exit the top bead where I started and I'm going to pull both threads a little bit just to make sure that everything is nice and neat. Make sure nothing's bunched up, everything looks nice and that is our center of the necklace. Now we're coming out of the crystal on the top here so what we're going to do is we're going to start working right angle weave from one side to the other, but we're going to work it through the 11 o seed beads, not through the crystals. So with right angle weave, you are always going to share one bead in each unit. We are now going to make units that have four crystals in each bead or in each unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down through this 11 o seed bead. We're going to be sharing this 11 0 seed bead, so we only need to have three 11 0s on our needle, but we need four crystals. Since we're coming out of 11 0, we're going to start with a crystal to pick up. So pick up a six millimeter bicone, then pick up an 11 0, then pick up a six millimeter bicone, then an 11 0. Oops, excuse me, I dropped it. And then a six millimeter bicone, and an 11 0 and a six millimeter bicone. So this is what you will have. You'll start and end with a bicone crystal. You'll have three 11 O's in between your four bicones. You're coming out of this side of your 11 O seed bead. You're going to go into the opposite side. And now as you can see, we have made a unit with four 11 O seed beads and four crystals. We're sharing the 11-0 that's already on the unit. 
Now we are going to sew up through this unit and around it to secure it because it's loose and wobbly. We're now doing one thread right angle weave. So we're going to go up through the 11 O's, uh, or excuse me, the crystal, the 11 O, the crystal. Just every single bead you put on, you're going to sew back through. When you do one needle or one thread right angle weave, you need to reinforce it. So I'm going back through the crystal that I, or the seed bead that I connected to. And then I'm going to sew back up to the top of my unit so that I can make my next unit. So I'm coming out of the 11 O that I connected to. I'm going to go up through the next crystal, the 11 O between the two crystals on the side here, up through the crystal and up through the 11 O. And I'll show you where I'm at as I pull my needle back out. Here we go. There we go. So all I've done is reinforced it and then sewn back up to the top 11 0 because I'm going to work my units this way. Now I'm going to park that needle. It's ready to start my next unit, but I want to go ahead and even out this side too. So I'm going to pick up my left needle. I'm coming out of the crystal here. I want to come out of this 11 0 because I'm going to build my unit from the 11 0. So I'm going to go through this 11 0 seed bead here. And make sure you pull your right thread and needle way out of your way so it doesn't tangle. And then we will pick up the same combination of beads as we did on this side for this side. We will be sharing the 11 0 seed bead, so we need to pick up a bicone first, and then an 11 0, and then a bicone. Let me back off a little so you can see what I'm doing. A bicone, an 11 0. A bicone and an 11 0 and a bicone. So you want to make sure that you have on your piece or on your needle four crystals with three 11 0's in between. Start with a crystal and end with a crystal. Drop this down to the left side of your piece and go through the opposite side of the bead we're connecting to. So we came out of this side here. We're going to go into this side here and we're going to pull all of these into a circle like so. And this will just make a little V shape. Now we need to sew through this unit. So pick it up and just start sewing through all of the beads you just put on. Don't miss any of your 11 O's because then your unit will be all weird. And when you're working with a dangle, your thread is going to constantly want to tangle around it. Just be aware of that and pull it through. And using two threads, it, it gets kind of, I don't know, it can be kind of boggled up. So just try to control it the best you can. Try to keep your threads separate and Now I've gone around this entire unit. I need to go into my connecting bead and then sew back up to this top bead so that I am ready for my next unit. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way back up to the top 11 0 here. Now I have a good basis and I can see where I'm going with my necklace. So at this point, we're just going to work on the right side and build our units. So after you've reinforced the left side, just park your needle over to the side somewhere, pick up your right side and let's start building some right angle weave units here. We're always going to be connecting to the 11 0 seed bead. So pick up your piece, Pick up a six millimeter bicone crystal, an 11 0 seed bead, a six millimeter bicone crystal. Come here. Sure. 
and then an 11O seed bead and a bicone, 11O bicone, so that you have four bicones, three 11Os, and then just dump them off your needle. That works, like so. And then you're going to go into the opposite side from which you're exiting. So I'm exiting on this side of the need, uh, bead here, so I'm going to go into the opposite side and pull my beads down. And then I'm going to reinforce them. So I'm going to sew through all of the beads I just put on here. This needle is bent and it's giving me a little bit of a headache here. So, all the way around the entire unit. Until you get back to your connecting bead. And once you go through it, and so halfway around again until you're through the top bead that you'll connect your next unit to. So go into this one here. Here. And up through here. And we will just continue making these units with the four crystals until we have nine units. And the way I am counting these is I am counting the little 11 o seed bead in the center. So here's, this crystal is sideways, right in our very center of our necklace, it's sideways. I'm going to count one 11 o seed bead right here on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm just counting my units that way because there is the little 11 o right in the center that's easier to see than where the unit of the crystal forms itself. <clears throat> so once you have that, of course, you can make more units or less units. It depends on what you want. But once you have those nine units, if you're doing it like I'm doing it, then we are going to extend our fire line. I still have a little bit, so I will make one of my smaller crystal units and I will show you how to extend your thread. So what we're going to start <clears throat> doing now is we're going to make the exact same units, but we're going to use four millimeter bicone crystals instead of six millimeter bicone crystals. So we're going to start with a four millimeter and then an 11 O, a four millimeter, 11 o, 4 millimeter, 11 o, <clears throat> and 4 millimeter bicone crystal. Come here. Oh, come here. Goofy thing. Okay. So now I have all of my crystals on here exactly the same as I was doing my six millimeter, but I'm doing it with four now. I'm going to drop these down and I'm going to come into the 11 O seed bead that I was coming out of. It's a little too close. So I'm coming out of this side. I'm going to go into the opposite side and pull these down. I'm going to sew through it one time so I can use up some more of my thread that's already on my needle. And then we're going to extend this thread so that we can finish the side of the necklace. Like I said, if you wanted to start with a lot more thread, you won't have to do this part, but it's I'd, I'd rather extend my fire line than struggle with yards and yards of thread on my needle. So we're going to sew all the way to the top. So I put my um, unit on. Sewed around and secured it, just like we were doing with the larger beads. Now I'm going to come out of the top bead where I would put my next unit, right there. Let me show you. So now you can see I have a unit of 4 millimeter instead of 6 millimeter. So now I'm going to pull my needle off of there. I've got a few inches on here, probably 4 inches or so, of thread left. I am going to grab excuse me, I'm trying to zoom out a little. I'm going to grab probably another wingspan of thread. I'm going to measure it out, cut it off my spool, and then I'm going to tie a square knot with the thread that's already on my unit. And this may be hard to see. I have a video showing you how to do this also. It's called 
uh, threading a beading needle and adding thread to a project. It's video number four, I believe, on this channel. So you can look that up too. Let's get really close so you can see what I'm doing. This is the thread on my piece. This is the thread I just cut. I'm going to put the thread I just cut underneath the thread on my piece. And then I'm going to take the thread on my piece and I'm going to go down and around the new thread, like so. And then I'm going to take the two pieces on top here, crisscross them. Take one side and go down and around the loop you just created, like so. So now you've got a loop of thread. Pull it together. Try to keep it as close to your piece as possible. That way you're not pulling the little knot we create through your piece a million times. Then pull the excess thread down through the knot you just created. Tighten the knot like so. And then I like to take my scissors and cut these two pieces close to the knot like so. Now I have two little tails sticking out of my little knot here. And then I will take a lighter and I will just put that little tiny, blow it out, and that lighter doesn't work well, let me get another one. I will put the little piece of thread right at the end of the flame here and just roll it into a little tiny ball. Now, if I get really close, you can see that I didn't really light my thread on fire. I just put it close and it turned my thread into a little ball on the end there. And you want it to be fairly small. Don't make a great big wad because then your knot will be really big. Then we're going to go to the other tail that we left and we're going to do the same thing. Just roll a little ball with your heat at the bottom of the flame there. And then take the thread that's on the piece, hold on to it, hold on to your new thread, wrap it around your finger, and pull these two threads together until your knot, the two little balls on the end becomes your knot, like so. And it's a really strong, really nice knot. Now, I'm going to back off, and we are going to put this thread we just added onto the needle again and we will continue making units. So I'm just going to squish the end of my thread so it's flat with my flat nose pliers and then I'm going to slide it through my needle again. See if it cooperates with me. There we go. And pull my thread through of course. And now I'm ready to start making more units. So I'm going to start now by making my units with four millimeter and I'll pick up my four millimeter bicone, an 11-0, a four millimeter bicone, get back off. And a 11-0, four millimeter bicone, 11-0. 4 millimeter bicone and 11 0. So I have four 4 millimeter bicones with, um, actually, I don't want 11 0, with three 11 0s in between. So this is what you should have four bicones, three 11 0s. Start with a bicone, end with a bicone. And then we're coming out of this side of the 11 0. We'll go into this side, the opposite side, and we'll pull this down. Now my little knot will just pull right through my beads, like so. And I can just continue sewing. So I'll sew up through all of my beads here. And then sew back through them. I cut an awfully long piece of thread, so <laughs> watching me pull, that's probably too much, but you know. Oh well. Okay. So there's my next unit. Now I'm just going to, I'm going to get in close so you can see it. Now I'm going to sew up to the top of this unit. Okay. 
and I'm ready to begin my next one. The exact same thing as we've been doing, we're just going to put on our four bicones with our three 11 O's in between and then attach to our connecting bead and we're going to continue doing that until we have 13 units. So again, I am counting the little 11 O seed beads in the middle. So this is my last 11 O here that I counted with this unit. So I'm going to go one, two, three, let me back off, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And my very last one here. So just count the center 11 0 until your very last one is number 13. Now that is if you want to make the same length I'm making, which will be right around a little over maybe 20 inch necklace. If you want to make it shorter, then you'll make less of these units. If you want to make it longer, you'll make more of these four um, millimeter bicone crystal units. That's how you'll adjust the length of your necklace. Now I want to add my clasp on this end. So what I'm going to do is I'm coming out of this little 11 0 seed bead here. I am going to pick up three of my 15 0 seed beads. Then I'm going to pick up a bicone crystal, four millimeter, and then I'm going to pick up an 11 0. I'm going to drop these down to my piece of work here. And then I'm going to go through my clasp and then once I'm through my clasp, I'm going to go through the 11 -0 and through the bicone crystal only, and I'm going to exit. I'm going to hold on to those beads and just pull this down like so. Then I'm going to pick up three 15 -0 seed beads. Like so. And I'm going to go back into the 11 0 seed bead that I started in right here and pull this down. And this is what it should look like. Let me get you real close. Now I'm going to sew back through this several times so I can secure this. So I'm going to pick up my piece. And I'm coming out of the 11 0 seed bead here. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit of slack as you're doing this. You can tighten it as you sew back around. So I'm going to go back up through these three 15 0 seed beads here. Well, I got two. I'll pull through. Then I'll go into this 15 0 here. And the crystal. And the 11 0 pull my thread through, then I'll go through my clasp and I will sew back down. So I'm going to go back into my 11 0, my crystal, the 15 0's, back through the 11 0 that I started in. And I'm going to do that, oh, I hope I wasn't out of frame. I'm just sewing around. Let's do it one more time. Let's go up the 15 O's here, the crystal, and the 11 O. Back off a little. Go through the clasp. Go back down into the 11 O underneath the clasp, the bicone crystal, the 15 O seed beads. And then I will go back into this 11 0. Now you can do that as many times as you think you need to to secure that. For the length of the video, I'm going to call that good. And now I'm going to go through, I'm coming out of the 11 0 here. I'm going to go down into this unit. So I'm just going to go into the crystal, the 11 0, and the crystal, and then go into this 11 0 here. <clears throat> then I'm going to sew down these two crystals here and the 11 0. I'm just sewing down my piece, which will kind of strengthen it and um, secure my thread, and then I will knot it. So now I'm going to go down into these, 
And you don't, you can do this as much as you, or little as you want. I'm going to go through this 11 0 here, and then right here, I'm going to grab the thread between this 11 0 and this crystal. And I'm going to pull my thread into a loop, come up through it with my needle, and pull a knot down between those beads. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew into the next unit. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. So I will go through this 11 over here. Get you close again. See if I can stay in frame. And I'm going to grab between this 11 0 and this crystal the thread bridge that's there and come up through the loop and pull. And I have a little knot between the beads and I can sew away from it some more. So you can sew through and do that as much as you want, securing, and then go ahead and cut your thread off. So here I'm going to come through this 11 0. I'm going to cut, leaving a little bit of extra thread. Then I'm going to take my lighter and burn this little extra thread down. Get out of your way. Or it's get to where you can see. So you can see that little piece of extra thread I left. I'm just going to melt that down between my beads. And then I have one completed side of my necklace. And now we can start the other side. So what we'll do is we'll just push this aside. Our extra needle and thread that we've finished with we'll just set somewhere else and we'll start doing this side of the necklace the exact same way we did this side. So you will make your units until you have nine of your 11 O seed beads. You can count two and then you will make your 12, um, your units until you have 12 or 13, excuse me, 13 11 O seed beads in the center of the four millimeter bicone crystal units and put your clasp on. So if you need to rewind or back up the video, I guess rewind is kind of old school, but back up your video and watch the first side if you need to and do this side exactly the same way you did this side. Once we have finished that, putting on the clasp and tying it off, I will come back and show you the finished product. Okay, so I am back and I have finished um, the entire second side of the necklace. So it's actually this side that I finished. I just went ahead and did the exact same number of big components and small components as I did on the first side and then attached the other side of my clasp exactly the same way that I attached the first side of the clasp. And as you can see, the necklace turns out really pretty. It's kind of a new spin on a classic. So it's it's just really pretty. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any issues or questions, please leave a comment for me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Have fun. Bye-bye.